something horrible happened to my street buoy. I finally get the two station nine knives I've been lusting after and 1095, the hail and hearty high carbon. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, some of my favorite comments from this past week were uh, one was from James E. Bross, who says, talk, 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 and no say anything. And um, well, that speaks for itself. Uh, thank you, James, for your contribution. And then we have one from Darth Vapor, who leaves some pretty awesome comments. 6745, he says, bollocks. If the Bowie knife was pronounced buoy, it would have been written that way. So take your pick. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. You know, Bowie is in the is in the DNA, the cultural DNA. Uh, but I'm still going to I'm still going to attempt to go for Bowie. I want to be as versatile a knife junkie as possible. You know, we don't want to get too stuck in our ways. OK, uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for watching over this past week. Been putting up uh, more shorts than usual because uh, I don't know, sometimes I need that quick expression. Love those shorts. Uh, so if you're a, a, a channel starting out, take advantage of the shorts. All that said, uh, right now it's time for a pocket check. In my front right pocket, I had the Boker rendition of my Grail folder, the Charles Marlowe Boker Square, uh, the Charles Marlowe Squail, and in this case, made by Boker. Uh, beautifully rendered in um, VG10 blade steel. That's a full four inch blade, deeply hollow ground, very thin behind the edge. Uh, these, these I believe, are now discontinued. Um, uh, I know that the smaller version, uh, the the pup, uh, I think it was the pup or the bull pup, uh, a little uh, knife made by Boker. Also, it was a three inch Charles Marlowe buoy. Um, I know that that one's discontinued. This one, I, I don't know. You might have some luck finding this. Uh, they have sold it in two different ways. This way with the G10 and the pocket clip up or down. But the original version was a tip down only but with green micarta. So, uh, you know, dangling the beautiful combination of green micarta and those blasted titanium bolsters, but tip down only, wah, wah. And then I think much later, after I, quote unquote, settled for the G10 model, I think they came out with a green uh, canvas micarta version with the tip down, anyway, uh, or tip up. So, you know, first world issues. I love this knife so much. It is, it is, the most beautiful knife to me, folder-wise, I think. It's between that and the Arch Nemesis uh, by Brian Nadeau. Nadeau. All right, next up, uh, in my left pocket, right pocket, it fluctuates depending on where my phone is. Uh, in the Duty's Dagger slip, this beautiful uh, little slip, uh, I commissioned Kevin Duty to make for this because I know he has this knife and loves it. Uh, the QSP Hedgehog. Uh, this, the exclusive from uh, traditional pocket knives with the thin jigged my um, jigged titanium scales. I, I really, really love this knife. Uh, I used this yesterday. I'm creating a new background uh, for for the desk here, and I wanted to have it ready for today. It wasn't ready for today. It has a little bit more work uh, to do on it, but I used this to do some cutting, uh, some real fine cutting for it, and it worked great, even with the jacked up tip. Yes. I dropped this awesome thing on its tip. You can see right there. And I did a pretty good job. It, at least it's it doesn't look straight, but the edge is now straight. So when I cut with it, I know where the tip is and everything. Real bummer. I, 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 I might get a cheaper one and see if I can swap the blades in. But that wouldn't make sense because this is M390. And, uh, and it would be 154 cm. But uh, whatever. That's neither here nor there. This is a great knife and a really good user. Again, a super thin hollow ground blade, uh, but instead of VG10 like you have in the Squale, this time it's M390, the venerable M390. Lots of venerable steels in this show today. Uh, on my In my waistband, uh, coming up uh, this way, well, you know what I mean, uh, uh, what's the word? Appendix, Carrie, is the Tomashi 
uh, by Sabivi. Now, this is a lar uh, larger and straighter than usual for uh, what I like to carry in the waistband, but it actually goes really well. Uh, this I, I have it set up so that this clip can move, and this is a Ranger band here, basically a heavy-duty rubber band. And so when I sit down, I don't want this poking, uh, you know, so this allows it to move and um, it, it can ride it flat across my waist. And then when I stand up, uh, it can position itself a little bit more like this in line with my body and everything. And it carries great. So now I'm starting. This is making me consider carrying larger fixed blade knives um, in appendix. But I have to set up the clip properly. Um, I don't know. The jury's still out, but it works for this. And I've been carrying this a lot because uh, you will see on Sunday, this coming Sunday, uh, I interviewed Bob Terzawola. Great interview. What an awesome guy. Now, I've had him on the show once before, but it was before we even had video. So uh, that was a great show then, too. Good conversation. But I wasn't as good at conversating, as people like to say. And uh, and you couldn't see him and, and all of that. So this was a, turned out to be a great show. And, uh, man, what a mensch great guy and designer of, of some spectacular, you know, I was talking about this uh, as a grail. Well, his ATCF is another grail. If I have maybe five top grails, that would be one of them. Uh, so having the Tamashi is, is a, is a good, uh, it's good to have his design within reach. Now he has a Fox ATCF coming out. Uh, Fox is celebrating their 40th anniversary and uh, they're doing it. Uh, in part by uh, doing this collaboration uh, with Bob Terzuola and putting out a three and a half inch flipper ATCF. It looks gorgeous. The originals were four inches long. Um, I know that uh, uh, Custom, Knife, uh, Custom Knife Factory has done a four inch Terzuola, but it wasn't the ATCF. Anyway, I'm very excited for that box and I will definitely uh, be getting one. Uh, there's uh, going to start with titanium slabs and then they're also going to do one with g10 and bolsters uh for emotional support my esk today was the vero engineering synapse one i haven't carried in a little while but since i died the micarta scales this beautiful maroon uh it's it's been way more appealing to me this had one of those micarta handles that don't absorb oil so you don't get the true color out of them and they just end up being kind of gray which is mine sometimes but this was more of a yellow gray so it almost looked like rot had set in it was just an unattractive piece of micarta on this particular knife um but it's a special knife to me because uh joseph vero well he gave me a good deal on it at blade show 2021 and it's also an awesome knife and i've thought about swapping it out for the four inch model but um but this one is special and i'm just gonna keep it so i dyed it maroon and i've given it a second life i really love this thing so this is what i had in pocket today let me know what you had on you it was the boker squail by charles marlowe it was the hedgehog by qsp and traditional pocket knives.com it was the uh, bob terzuola and savivi tomashi -e and the um uh, vero engineering synapse one of the smoothest knives by the way in my collection what did you have on you let me know drop it in the comments uh what are, what, are, what are you doing right? Tell me what I need to know. Uh, tell me what knives I should get. And uh, by the way, this has very satisfying washer action. I love the washer action. I'm coming, uh, coming back to it. Not that I ever left it, but I have so many um, bearing knives now and everything is made with bearings that uh, I really now appreciate uh, a, a fine washer knife when I get one in hand. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about the giveaway. We've been talking about it a lot. Tomorrow night's Thursday Night Knives giveaway. I'm gonna pause for some coffee. Thursday Night Knives, tomorrow night, we're giving away, and actually Dirk Pinkerton will be here to do so, but uh, Dirk Pinkerton has very generously donated this to the channel. This is his most recent uh, knife. Uh, this is number 166, as you can see here, so it's serial numbered, and this is an even cooler version than the one I have, in my opinion, um, because it's the black ring, black blade version of his ringed inversion. With that gorgeous tumbled black blade, uh, that's S35. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, that's right. S35VN. You have a nice orange peel uh, textured uh, titanium handle that is just stunning here. And you've got the um, pocket catch, like wave feature, but that doesn't float your boat. Down here underneath the, um, the foam, you have a deep carry pocket clip uh, instead of this beautiful sculpted titanium pocket clip if you want a little lower profile. And then you also get a, where is it? Oh, here it is. A thumb stud for more discreet opening, I guess. Uh, but the way it sits in there, uh, you can still kind of wave it out if you're if you're uh, if you do it carefully. So this is a what is this? This is like a three hundred dollar value. Um, I was in on this. Uh, I guess the the pre order started over a year ago, and. Uh, there was like a deposit and then and then there was a pay up time and yeah this is like a $300 knife and it's beautifully made um so i would jump on it i would jump on it there are no um the kaiser inversion is out of print now and if you like this brand of beautiful folding um pickle, come to thursday night knives tomorrow night 10 p.m. eastern standard time uh if you're listening to this or or watching this in the future sorry you missed it uh, but it is uh, going to be a giveaway open to everyone. This is not a Patreon uh, affair. This is a anyone who's there. So you'll just have to put hashtag knife in the comment section and we'll throw it in a big bundle and, and, and do the, uh, the random number generator. So very much looking forward to getting this out of here because, man, I love it. I have my own, but it's got the silver. Uh, it's got the silver. What do you call it? Um ring and blade and it's very cool but i don't know with the black the black is menacing and it it matches the menacing design i guess and it comes in this cool little pelican-esque it looks like a mini sniper rifle case to me very cool all right next up i just want to show you this is a little cautionary thing my one of my favorite production fixed blades of all time the street buoy uh, I was carrying it around the house this weekend doing chores. Uh, I like to have, I don't know, I'm getting paranoid. And even in my house, like I like to have more than just a folder on me. Um, and anyway, it comes in handy, especially when you're working around the house. Well, anyway, taking out garbage and working in the back. And, and there's that door that I have propped up against the back fence. Uh, where I throw knives and I just pulled this out and I threw it at it. And this is, this has been very good historically at throwing, but this time that happened. <laughs> I heard it too. I just heard a snap and you know what? It was my fault. I was at an angle and I was like doing an action throw like, Oh, I'm just casually walking. Now I'm pulling this out and throwing it. And it, you know, I was being stupid and you play, stupid games you win stupid prizes and in this case the stupid prize is a gorgeous fred perrin design spider co produced street buoy without a tip so this weekend or next weekend or whenever i have the chance i'm going to put a tip on that and make it more of a broke back sax i guess and make a new sheath because it'll bother me that the sheath is too long for the blade and and I'll kind of mope along on my way. But now this means I really want a, a, a legit street buoy. But I, I, how can I? How can I go back and buy another one? What an idiot. So VG10, I'm guessing, in general, isn't so tough. Uh, like, say, 1095, the steel we're going to feature later. So be careful when you're just chucking your you know, uh, expensive Spydercos at doors. All right. I'll let you know. I'll keep you up to date. I, I can't really do without this in the collection. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to uh, put an angled tip on there. It'll look cool. It'll be cool, Bob. It will, I swear. And uh, I'm just convincing myself. And then we'll move along. Because if you don't move along in life, you're stuck. All right, here we go. Let's get into Life Knife News. But before we do, I just want to remind you that if you do want to be a part of a monthly knife giveaway, regardless of whether generous guys like Dirk Pinkerton are donating uh, knives or not, you can do so here uh, by going to Patreon and becoming a patron uh, at the Gentleman Junkie level. You just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Check out what we have to offer there. You get exclusive uh, interview extras uh, entered into this. 
into a monthly contest to win. And, uh, well, you can do so by scanning the QR code or going to thenightjunkie.com slash Patreon. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. You're listening to The Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's The Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Jim is not only a very talented producer and director, but he's an excellent draftsman, as you just saw in that uh, last liner. Very cool liner. Uh, okay, so I want to talk about some new knives here. You know Shot Show season and Blade Show season. That's where we hear about all the new knives. So I'm going to talk today about uh, the, rec the most recent design by, and I love saying his name, Fabrizio Silvestrelli uh, of Italy, of course. Uh, he designed the new Viper Moon and this is a, a really nice looking knife to me. Um, if it were larger, I might be compelled to get it, but it's a, it's the, this blade is under three inches, but beautiful three inch, very useful looking drop point blade with that uh, tip, uh, tip down uh, in the middle. Uh, Magna Cut, of course, uh, and all, all the new premium hot knives coming out are in Magna Cut because it's an excellent steel. Thank you, Laren Thomas. Uh, ribbed G10 and contoured um, micarta G10, fat carbon, you can get this in fat carbon. And it's the first button lock from Viper. That's, uh, that's the history part of it. Okay, I'm going to give you a little editorial here. Just looking at it, I love the blade shape. And the handle is interesting. Uh, but having a blade that short, that means the handle is short. It also means that it's going to be stout and round. It looks like it's just... A little too stout and round for me. That's why I said if you stretched out both the handle and the blade uh, with that shape, I'd be I'd be compelled to get it. So thanks for keeping it small and short, Viper. I appreciate it. Uh, this has a real Viper look to me too. Crown spine jumping right in front of that, uh, um, right in front of the thumb ramp, right where I love it. I like the way uh, the front part of a thumb ramp feels, and you had jumping, and you're in business. All right, next up, Benchmade has announced, uh, well, their whole new 2024 lineup. But here are three mm -hmm. items of interest uh, to me uh, that I saw in in, uh, in this recent uh, article. And the first one is the Adira. This, this one is exciting to me for uh, uh, two reasons. 3.88 inch blade, very handsome looking, looking knife. And it's in Magna Cut. I like this because it's, it, it reminds me of a Shane Sibert design. It actually looks like it should be a Shane Sibert design. Um, so kind of uh, a brother or cousin to the Adamus. It kind of has that vibe to me. And then with the size, you'll get that definitely. And now this is part of their new water line. Uh, their water line, much like uh, Spyderco's um, Spider uh, salt lineup, is meant to be used in and around water for sportsmen and people who live in uh you know um, humid environments uh these knives were all will all feature that depth blue uh handle material so that that i think it's a grn uh it doesn't say in this article right here actually but uh that will be uh that color that will signify that it's a part of this line and they will be using magna cut which was not um an, a, a steel that was necessarily made to to function in this way uh but but does so beautifully with its with its very very high corrosion resistance. Uh, the mini version of this will be 3.2 inches, and uh, this looks like a cool one to me. Deep carry pocket clip and all. All right, we're going to scroll down uh, past some of these uh, waterline uh, knives here to the to the red bally song. It's just a stunning uh, new bally song, and they're calling it right here the Necron. Look at that swashbuckling clip point blade. I love that. Uh, it's a really nice looking knife, 4.6 inch blade. Now this is, uh, you know, that's the original size of the Bally song. Like Bally songs were traditionally, that's what I mean, not original. That's the traditional size of 4.5 inch blade. And I guess that's going to make the handle close to five and a half inches maybe. Um, so uh, 
cool thing about this knife, and I'm not sure what the steel is yet. They have not announced that. Uh, I'm guessing maybe Magnica, uh, but it's going to come with a blue trainer, which is very cool, and two different colors. And uh, this red G10 with that uh, tumbled black finish on the blade is is really handsome to me okay the removable tungsten weights and handle extensions are also a usp for this necron knife uh handle extensions and addable tungsten weights for the true uh, connoisseur of the ballet song for the the guy who really knows how he wants to flip that knife and he needs just a little bit of extra weight on the end he can put on that tungsten weight. So an interesting new ballet song from Benchmade. And they are, uh, they've kind of always carried the torch. That was kind of how they started making ballet songs. And they've always kind of made uh, some of the most coveted ones out there. So this is a cool one to see. Uh, and the last one I want to feature is the Claymore. And this is a new daggerine take on the drop point Claymore. Uh, out the front. This one is 3.8 inches, so again, a nice big blade. All, all four, three of the blades we, we've talked about have been either over 4 inches or just under. Um, the reason this one really caught my eye, uh, it's, it's a, I, I, I like the wasp waisted handle, first of all. It looks like it's going to be very comfortable in hand, and it's going to lock into hand without having any sort of finger guards because of that uh, thinner portion towards the pommel. So that attracted my eye immediately. But of course, the big 800-pound gorilla in the room are those really nasty-looking serrations uh, on both sides of the blade close to the, uh, close to the um, handle. I love those. Now, those are only going to come on the large version. There's also a three-inch version of that knife, um, but they will not have those wicked serrations. So very cool out the front. I'm sure it's going to be uh, expensive, uh, just saying. And uh, it's got uh, jimping on the pommel, which I love, because this is the kind of knife you are very likely to be using in a tactical scenario um, and or, or that, you know, is made for that scenario. And so having that jimping right up there on the, th on the thumb is great so that your thumb doesn't slip in the moment of truth. Anyway, lots, uh, I don't, I don't want to say lots of cool things coming out from Benchmade. You know how I feel about them, uh, uh, respect them, but their designs never excite me that much, except when they have guest spots by Shane Sibbert or others. This Adira, I do think, um, hits on that kind of note. All right, next up from the James brand. You know, I have a, I like to friendly, I, I'd love to talk to someone from the James brand. Let me start off. I would love to, and I would love to talk to them. And then I can stop being so snarky about them. I think it's just fun because they're, they're kind of hip. And um, maybe I'm, maybe it's a, a defensive measure because I've, I've grown beyond hip. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a suburban dad and, and hip does not, does no longer fit. Um, so maybe I like to rib them a little bit. They are cool. They have great style and they have some really beautiful looking knives. Chief among them, the Barnes. Uh, that's their um, 3.6 inch integral uh, frame lock flagship. It's, it's awesome. I don't have one. I've never held one. I don't think I've ever held one. But uh, I, I, I do think they are, if I were to get a James brand knife, it would be that. They are a tad bit expensive at $650. Uh, however, they look good. Uh, so this one, uh, the new James, uh, the new James brand Barnes. Now this is a limited edition, uh, but it features upcycled material. Uh, so the, that that kind of cool looking handle material is made from old kitchen appliances uh, from a place called Smile Plastics in the UK. They make uh, unique plastic compositions and um, yeah compositions from recycled plastic. And I, I say irony in the, in the lower third there because, well, because it's expensive, it's still 650 bucks and it's, it's using garbage, you know, <laughs> and you're like, Bob, don't be such an old fart. It's recycled. It's upcycled material. Look, it's, a, it, it's value added. And, and I say, yeah, sure it is, but it should be less expensive because it's made out of garbage. <laughs> and you say, well, Smile Plastics in UK doesn't say that. They make, uh, they make beautiful new plastic composites um, and, and turn old things new and, and make them beautiful again. And I don't know, just something about it made me chuckle. I think it's great. 
I'm all for the upcycling thing. I'm all for recycling. It actually is not a myth, at least not in my jurisdiction. Uh, but I don't know. It just it just made me laugh. Is there fun something funny about it? I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. It looks like an old. Um, it reminds me actually of an old slip joint knife with uh, some sort of mother of pearl handle. I mean, it it is very fetching. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, I've reached out to the James brand before. I should do it again. I'd love to actually have someone on here and make me feel bad. <laughs> okay, next and last. Uh, this one from Boker. Oh, God. You know how I feel about Boker Plus. Uh, I don't have too many of them. I have a smallish collection, but what I do have, they are excellent. Um, I'd say about 10 years ago, they suffered a reputational damage from some QC issues. Uh, I never experienced them personally. All the all the Boker Plus knives I have are stout hearted and and very well done. So uh, last one here. This is the the uh, Boker Plus collection model for 2024. They they uh, on an annual basis team up with a famous maker or designer and create a collection model for that year. 2024 is, is by uh, the great and powerful Les George, and look at that. That's so beautiful. That is Les George all day long. Just a, a beautiful and simple design, yet uh, rendered in a more complex manner. That's a 3.66 inch Magna Cut blade. Beautiful drop point blade. It looks like a Les George blade. You say, it's so simple. How can you say that? But something about the lines and maybe how they correspond with the handle um, says Les George all day long, just like the handle. Now the handle is interesting here because it's it's a it's a titanium frame lock. So the other side is a frame lock and it's got a unique looking sort of clip that I'm not crazy about. Uh, but the show side has a uh, two different kinds of carbon fibers, two different kinds of fat carbon fiber. The bolster is called Black Dunes carbon fiber. And you can see that sort of, uh, it looks like sand dune swirl kind of, or, or sand dune wave pattern running through it. And then the um, main handle material is called space coral fat carbon fiber. So this thing just is a really pretty looking. I love the blue hardware and uh, uh, I'm sure it'll be pretty expensive. They Boker does make some pretty expensive knives. Their, their uh, collection knives are pretty expensive and their um, knives that they make uh, using uh, old tanks and battleship uh, metal and stuff like that. Those are expensive as well, but you know, you're getting what you pay for. You're getting a, a German made, you know, knife with exquisite uh, workmanship and materials. So that is it for new knives coming out and uh, uh, knife life news. I want to get to the state of the collection, but before we do, I just want to thank everyone who watches and uh, listens. Um, whether you watch here uh, or you just watch the shorts, if you just watch the shorts, then you don't hear me thanking you. But thanks anyway. Uh, maybe I'll do a short thanking you there. Uh, also, uh, I like that you can download the show and just listen on the go. You can do that on those podcast apps right here on the screen. So thank you one and all. I, without you, this would I would just be barking at the sky. Old man barking to the sky about knives. Thanks for uh, keeping me out of the nut house. All right, coming up, state of the collection. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Spartan Harsey Fighter. This popular collab between Spartan Blades and Bill Harsey is built on a full-length tang of 1095 CV steel in an all-black finish with that signature Harsey handle profile. Made in the USA, Kershaw Live Wires. They're USA made with perfectly tuned out-the-front action and CPM Magna Cut now in new dagger and carbon fiber models. And the Mudbone Muskrat by Lon Humphrey features a 3.1-inch blade of forged AEBL stainless steel. Truly functional art that just happens to be a knife. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. You know Station 9. They make these really cool knucks I've shown you. These aren't knucks. These are 
knuckle dusters uh, based on Hungarian World War I army trench knuckles. Pretty nasty. And uh, also the lapel dagger I've shown off a million times uh, that you would that the uh, resistance guys would would or spies would sew in into the lapels of their jackets or into the pockets of their pants so they have a last ditch you know way to get out of a sticky situation station 9 is uh two french guys uh <laughs> two french guys no uh, uh, uh two gentlemen uh, over there in france and also i think tony lopez is a part of that uh uh operation and they design and make really cool knives based on historical world war ii and world war one um kind of like spy knives and resistance knives and and theater knives theater knives uh, generally are knives that were made or tweaked rehandled or whatever in the theater of battle and uh, so the first knife i've been looking at this for so long and i finally got it because i saw we all juggle knives had one of them and so I, he loved it and I had to get it. So this is the Partisan by Station 9. And uh, here's, here's their, their a patch that they sent. Station 9, become harder to kill. I think that's a great idea for everyone, whether you buy a Station 9 knife or not. Always, always be striving to be harder to kill. But this is based on uh, the World War I, a common sort of World War I french trench knife and you say it looks just like a french chef's knife and uh the trench knife is the the chef's knife because they didn't have a unified uh you know body supplying them with with trench knives uh when they went out into battle uh french soldiers would oftentimes have to take uh knives they already had like this butcher knife and tweak it for combat in this case it would be that that swedge making it a a great stabber. No doubt it'd be a great stabber without that swedge, but the swedge makes it better. Uh, so this is a 1095 blade steel. Uh, if you if you go to YouTube and Station 9 or um, Instagram, you can see the guys over there abusing them or putting them in the vise and, and a pipe over the handle and bending them to 90 degrees or close to, and then it pops back to true. Uh, these knives are really great. I'm not sure who makes them. They come in uh, anonymous white boxes with that very loud crinkly plastic um so that leads me to believe they're china made um but i don't know who makes them but they're pretty awesome i gotta say uh so i i like this micarta handle it's squared off just like a chef's knife something we're very uh, used to holding on a daily basis you know who doesn't do this once a day a pinch grip or something close to it so this hand, uh, this knife feels very comfortable in hand. It's very uh, natural, and I gotta say, with that with that sweeping belly and the and that nasty tip, it's become one of my favorite knives to uh, do Carenza with. Carenza is Filipino shadow boxing with a knife or a stick, and this one's great for that. It's nice and light. It's well balanced, and by the balance, I'm talking right at the. Uh, right at the forefinger balances right there. So it feels great in hand. So this is the station nine partisan. Uh, you can go to station nine.com. I guess that's where I bought this. I'm pretty sure that's, they might be at some of the retailers, but go to station nine.com and uh, you can see all of their, all of their products. Uh, they number them. Uh, I can't remember what number this one is. Um, this is the number three, I think. And this is the number four. And now the number eight is the next one I'm going to show off. And that's their sear model. So this is the number eight. And I put it, it does not come with a, a, a clip. I put a, the Civivi tech lock uh, clip on there. And this sheath is really tight and you can see it's uh, rubbing some, uh, some of that, some of the plastic onto the blade. Uh, but no matter, this is a Tony Lopez design knife. I've been following him on Instagram for a long time. He he designs some really cool stuff. And uh, they do a lot of uh, outdoor jungle kind of stuff. So this this is more of a survival style knife. Sear, uh, survive, evade. Oh, damn. <laughs> I should have looked this up again. Resist and escape, right? survive evade resist escape sear uh 
uh, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments or at least tell me I'm an idiot. Uh, so this is a is a meant to be an all arounder survival knife. Uh, this is also 1095. You've got contoured micarta. Uh, I mean, contoured G10 handle slabs that come all the way up on the full tang quillions, which I really appreciate. So it's very, very comfortable and also super secure in hand. Uh, you've got in, in very French fashion here, even if you did not have this guard, you would have a blade wider than the pinch point at the, at the forefinger, uh, meaning the blade itself is the guard. Here you have an extended uh, guard to, to fortify that, but I love that feature in um, French knives. You see it in all the time in Fred Perrin's designs. Um, and actually, Station 9 has done a collaboration with Fred Perrin, which is the perfect combination. Um, so I love that about this knife. But I also just really dig that, uh, that clip point blade. It is really stabby. Um, in a very non-scientific anecdotal uh, story, a bit of bit of experimentation, I thrust this at a at a loose flap on a box, and it uh, it went through like it wasn't even there. So this survival, evade, resist, escape knife, this sear knife, is uh, I, I think this with that tough 1095 steel is going to be a real real great sort of just all around survival knife something to have on you all the time in your bag um they even sell a sheath that has a, like a survival kit kind of wrapped around it i need to look into that so uh that's the station nine number eight spear and uh uh survival evasion resistance and escape sear got it uh thank you jim jim just uh, shored me up on that station nine become harder to kill. I'm going to try and get these guys on on the show. All right, next up, uh, I got another Victorinox. I'm not totally done with the Victorinox thing. Maybe now I am. Uh, but this one is special and cool. You know that I'm a nerd about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Sabe. Uh, here, here he is on this uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive Tinker. And it says Bigfoot Hide and Seek World Champion. Got a nice little graphic there, kind of a good representation. More man-like than gorilla. <laughs> Pretty cool. And you can see his giant feet down there right by the scale tool there. And that is the tweezers. A tinker oh, over here, hide-and-seek world champion in the foot. That looks more like a human foot, in my estimation, than a Bigfoot foot, but hey. Uh, so it's got the large blade, does the tinker. And then it also has a pen knife, pen blade, which I, I like. These pen blades stay super sharp if you don't use them. And you can keep this one for, for the usual use. And then if it dulls, you always have an extra one in reserve. Here's the opening layer. So you've got the uh, bottle opener, pry bar, screwdriver, wire stripper, wire bender notch, and a half stop on that one. And then no half stop on this the can opener. And then here you have the screwdriver. The Phillips head screwdriver instead of the um, the wine opener, and then or the corkscrew, and then you have the uh, all with the sewing eye. This is the model that Jim it, carries all the time, not with the Bigfoot on it because he's not a dork like I am. But uh, this is the model he's always carried, which is cool. The Tinker is, I think, I think it's like uh, with that screwdriver on there and with the with the two screwdrivers to me it's like the most useful if you're gonna have one swiss army knife that's the one i would get though i love scissors so and then i love their saw so it's starting to get fatter and fatter but if you want to keep a two-layer get a two-layer swiss army knife get a tinker all right uh, next up this one um this is the new release recent release by rough rider that people were just i just kept seeing videos about how how awesome this knife was so i had to i had to jump in or how awesome this line was and i like this model the best so i got it uh this is the rough rider uh black appaloosa bone 40th anniversary coke bottle jack it's got a real long name with that spade shield and everyone you know my trusted slip joint voices were saying just how incredibly built and finished this is and 
you know, it it really is. And I have to say, you know, Rough Rider, 40 years, they've really done some really excellent, excellent work. I mean, this is, you know, definitely at least as good as many of my cases. Um, you might argue that 440A steel is is uh, too weak for your needs, but I had this this weekend when I was walking around with the with the broken street buoy. I had this in my pocket and was was uh, cutting cardboard with this and this awesome coping blade, and I think it's still sharp. I mean, it it doesn't seem to have dulled much. Very nice walk and talk. Very, uh, I would give this an eight and a half pull on the coping blade, maybe a nine pull. Very stout pull on the coping blade, uh, which is a great, just a great shape for doing all sorts of utility. And then this, I would say the main blade, that's about an eight also. So I really like a stout and sturdy pull. And uh, this, this knife is pleasing to me. <laughs> Uh, I and one of the things I might I'm not extremely psyched or in love with the look of that white and black Appaloosa bone and I kind of knew that going into it but I also kind of knew that I'm into dying bone and dying micarta now so I think I might give this the old dye job and uh, make it a maroon or a purple or a blue or something but this this is a very 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 good jackknife for 16 bucks you know, I, I highly recommend, I was going to say, please, I shouldn't say please, but I highly recommend it. Um, and the funny thing is, is that I have a, uh, I have two copies of the 86 in this configuration from GEC. And, and obviously that is a superior knife in, in pretty much all ways. Uh, but if you like that knife and you don't want to bang around on it, this is a great alternative to that uh, knife because you got the coping blade and you got the large clip. All right, last up in the state of the collection here is, this is something unique. I went over to my, my uh, friend's house this weekend, and we were having uh, some drinks. And he's like, he told his wife, oh, she's like, did you bring it? And he said no, and he went back to his house and got it. And check this out. <laughs> this, now, this is now mine, this thing here. This three-bladed knuckle duster, it says on here, Designed by Tom Anderson, made by Master Cutlery. So this is this this has I have to clean it up and such, but these blades are sharp and this has an interesting story. Uh, it's real heavy and there's some stuff on it. I need to clean it. But anyway, um, the story behind this is a friend of my friend uh, got this as a groomsman gift for a wedding, and I thought, wow, man, what a wedding! holy mackerel uh and and actually he did not the the groom did not give these to everyone he just gave this to to my one friend's friend because they they knew he was into wolverine so it kind of looks like wolverine but uh i just thought it was hilarious i i, I had no idea. he's like oh i have something to give you and i assumed you know he's we've been sort of swapping knives recently and i assumed it was going to be a regular knife but instead it was this and it hangs on this stately uh mounting thing so it's you're gonna see this on the wall maybe not behind me uh but i, I think over on my other wall my secondary wall of fame uh you will see this up there uh, i have learned in just doing some carenza with this that this is not a very natural action for me uh what's more natural is is this kind of action not this kind of action because when you're using the blades on this your hand is it's like you're hitting people like this. I'm not used to that. This I'm used to, you know? So anyway, interesting learning curve. Will I use it? Maybe, uh, you know, self-defense, you never know. You never know. I don't think work would look too, too fondly on that one. I don't know what my carry sheath would be and it definitely wouldn't be in the waistband. Okay, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about 1095 and uh, I call it, well, it's a hale and hearty high carbon steel. Um, you know, it's stout hearted as the day is long. It's a, it's been around a long time and it's still being used uh, to, to great effect and in great volume by many companies. Uh, first of which I'm going to show, uh, first of, of which that comes to mind is K bar. Here's a, here's my K bar. It's a reproduction 
of the early World War II version with the sharpened swedge. And this was a, a uh, re-release in the early 90s. My brother got me. 1095 blade steel is high carbon, so it's going to rust on you. And this one here uh, has a sort of patina on it. Like, so I don't know. Mm. So we all know that we can patina 1095 in high carbon steel, and it turns into that dark mottled gray color that I find very appealing. A lot of people like to put patinas on their blades, not only to protect them, but for the looks. On this K-bar, which I've had for 30, over 30 years, um, there has been a sort of red rust patina on it. No matter how much I sort of, uh, maybe not as much on this side, but no matter how much I um, will clean it and oil it and stuff, this sort of, and it's, it's not like a corrosive, it, I guess maybe it is, but it, it doesn't seem to be rusting or breaking down the blade. It's, it's sort of a red rust patina though, right, right here. You can see it in here and a little bit in here and down, down there. And I've just given into it for a while. It used to bother me, but I think that might be what pro is protecting this just like a, uh, a non red rust or just a regular patina oxidize oxidization uh, protects the blade i think that's what's happening here anyway uh beautifully done with the stacked leather handles and the oval cross section i believe the case which i'd love to get the case model is a historical version with the sharpened swedge also but i believe their handle is fully round and round handles are you know they're, they're harder to control so this has that nice oval handle it's got the trench, the grooves in there, and those grooves really aid not only in um, the grip because your fat of your fingers sink in there, but also they help wick away stuff, moisture and, and wetness. Um, though, <laughs> though this material here is absorbent, so if if the top coating is breached, you're gonna you're gonna have some some trouble. But USMC K bar, a classic 1095. They call it Crovan so chrome, chromium vanadium uh, is just a classic knife and what you get out of it is toughness i'm going to put this one away and pull the next one out because it's a great example uh, toughness and edge retention decent edge retention excellent toughness and then uh, the ability to resharpen quickly now i'm not just speaking out of school i'm not just showing you my cool 1095 knives and and just saying what i've heard this is uh, one of my 1095 knives that I, I have truly put through the paces uh, more so than any other than you're going to see except for the very last one, uh, which has had even more action than this on it. But this is my uh, Topps Knives Tex Creek, and I'm going to let it focus here. And you can see that uh, it has seen some action out in the backyard. Uh, <laughs> That's mostly where it's it's seen action, but uh, I, I've cleared a lot of the back. I've done a lot over the years with this knife. This was probably three or four years. My my every Sunday and Saturday uh, backyard knife, and actually the profile of it has changed because I did chip this out right here at the belly. Um, I was doing some. You can tell from the little smile down here, but I was doing uh, some chopping of we have this one very tenacious poison ivy um that was that's integrated in with a chain link fence at the back part of our of our property and i was chopping away at it um you know i was all gloved up and such but it missed i missed i overshot and i hit the chain link fence just in the wrong way and and it it chipped it uh usually you'd expect a roll uh but in this case it a little notch was taken out. So I ended up resharpening, reprofiling the whole edge. It did not take me long. I did not even use my uh, green, my grinder machine. Uh, I used, first I used sandpaper uh, as if I were stropping it, but, but on sandpaper uh, going from a more coarse to a more fine and then took it to the stones. And uh, yeah, it's just been doing awesome for, for years now. And, um, you know, I was just talking about the toughness and then I talked about how it chipped, but, uh, that chip, you know, it has a, I don't know, maybe it's not a chip because it's got a little piece that's up here that you have to knock off. So that's more like a dent or a divot. Anyway, 1095 has proven to be pretty, uh, pretty resilient, uh, in, in my eyes, but also easy to take care of when you have to, 
when you have to put a new edge on it. Like if this were uh, M390 and I had to totally reprofile the edge, I'd be forlorn. I'd, <laughs> I'd have to send it away. So, all right, next, Hale and Hardy 1095. I won't show you for too long because I was just waxing poetic about this, but the, the uh, Station 9 uh, partisan. Another bit of evidence that uh, 1095 is a very, very durable and tough steel can be found in their Instagram videos where they abuse this knife. Not only, not only abuse it, but put it through very hard, you know, use it to cut up uh, paint cans and, and in, in survival situations, you'll see them out in the woods using this. They'll, you'll see it in urban environment, you know, going through different things that you might have to stab through. So, uh, you can really see how tough this blade steel can be by watching them abuse this knife. I will not abuse this knife. I like seeing other people do it and then knowing that it can handle it. <laughs> um, so this, uh, I'm glad that they did in 1095 and not in some larger, uh, not in some more super steel, something more brittle that uh, might be prone to, to breakage. Next one. Uh, this is a gift from my brother-in-law, actually just the sheath uh, because uh, the bay, well, the whole thing is a gift from my brother-in-law. The sheath was what he uh, carried in Iraq. His, his uh, bayonet was stolen <laughs> in Iraq. So, uh, so he gave me the sheath, but he bought a new uh, knife for it, and it's the M7 bayonet. And it's a double-edged, you know, a bayonet ground. Very sharp, man. This thing, I, for, I kind of forget about this knife. I have it hanging up uh, with in my other display, and uh, I, it's very sentimental because my brother-in-law, who's one of my favorite people in the world, gave it to me, and he served, he served our country. And I, I remember... When he was over there fighting in Iraq, I remember thinking, wow, what am I doing here? Um, I was too old at that point, but I was like, man, what? I'm just like living the freelance producer life over here in New York. Like, and, and this guy's over there like living in a, a hole he dug in the sand. So uh, thank you, one and all uh, who, who have served and who are serving. And uh, thank you, James. And thank you for giving me this. Uh, this is 1095. Uh, as are a lot of the um, a lot of the service knives, uh, 1095 or 1075. This one is 1095. Uh, 1075 is also a great steel. I have a I have a bunch of knives that I thought were going to be in this list. And I was like, oh no, that's 1075. Also great, also tough, also durable. Um, here we're seeing a little bit of that oxidization. I should probably take care of. Um, but this is a parkerized blade, as I believe the my original K bar was parkerized um and you can see it gets scratched off and maybe that's where some of that red rust might come in but very sharp uh wicked bayonet funny story he had about this uh was coming in and out of humvees with this on his uh belt was just a, a buzz kill for some reason and the one day he decided to take it off i won't need this today he actually needed it they were uh he was he did a lot of uh kind of stuff in the community, if you will. And um, they were told that they had a crowd closing in on them, an angry crowd, and they were told to fix bayonets. And he was like, mm, okay. <laughs> and a very, 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 very tense moment. So I'm not making light of it, but to, to reach down and not have the bayonet was, uh, was a, a bummer for him, as he describes it. You get the lug back here for attaching to the, to the rifle. And then this goes over the, the barrel. Very cool blade. And uh, man, what an amazing sheath this metal. So he was in the CAG 15th, I guess. Uh, that's what Civilian Affairs Group. Very cool. All right, next up is the only folder in this list. And this is representative of the brand. And it's Great Eastern Cutlery. I could have brought out any greatest, uh, Great Eastern Cutlery, but... I decided since we're talking about 1095 and its toughness and and all that, I decided I'd bring out the most work of work knives or the most work knife of my GECs, which is the large sod buster that they make. This is the bull buster. I can still see that etch ever so slightly on the blade. And oh, there we go. 
Uh, this had a pretty nice patina on it at one time, but I, I did scorched earth, went scorched earth on the patinas on all my Great Eastern cutleries, except for my uh, 66 and one of my 15s, and just took the patinas off all of them. And in doing so, you, I removed the etch. I don't care. I don't really like the etches. Uh, if I were to collect these only not to carry them, I would keep the etch. But 1095 on these, um, on the Great Eastern Cutlery folders, they do it so nicely. I mean, the the uh, blades take a great edge. I mean, you can get these things razor sharp, and they hold that edge pretty well. And I got to say, you don't really have to patina. All you got to do is wipe the damn knife when you're done. Wipe the blade when you're done using it, and uh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine unless you live in a super humid environment. Then you might want to hasten some sort of patina uh, using fruit or meat. I like a meat and fruit patina, but that's just me. Uh, this model here has a very nice linen micarta handle that, uh, yeah, I carried this quite a bit when I got it. You can see some of the oil from my hand. Um, and then also, if you oil the pivot, which I do sometimes, um, I, I did this once. I had to flush out some crap in there. You can also see that oil will seep out through the pivot and, and get into the micarta. It looks nice. Great Eastern Cutlery. I just had to force myself not to jump on the recent uh, 15 Tom's Choice Barlow. I was there. I was ready. I could have hit the button. I could have hit go. Uh, I had it open on my desktop at work. I was doing my my emails and I would just glance over at the time there was a countdown and then in the 11th hour I said you've got other stuff to spend your money on Bob don't do it I'm so responsible all right next very expensive knife to show off here that I never use is the uh, hog tooth knives uh, sub hilt fighter I have no idea how much this costs because it was a gift but I know it was not cheap this beauty has two different steels okay this is the one, <clears throat> one steel in this collection here, in this uh, lineup that has two steels. You see this? This is 1095 and 15 and 20. So 1095 is a great steel for uh, mixing in Damascus. And what I was just holding up there is a square that was used to make this very unique and beautiful Damascus pattern. See that? So the the 1095 is the is the lighter steel and the 15 and 20 is the darker steel. I'm I'm uh I'm sure I have that right because I just talked to Matt Chase about this. And the the process of making this to of making this steel with these tiles uh 1095 and 15 and 20 are a are pretty much the stand i don't want to say the standard maybe the most common uh combination they go together well when you etch them they they uh they're high contrast and then the 15 uh 15 and 20 uh and the 1095 are both very tough high carbon steels so together they will perform similarly and then when you um grind an edge and you look at the at the very edge they will have a pretty uniform edge because if you have two different steels in there and even though they're heat treated the same way at the very very uh edge things could be different but 15 and 20 mixes or goes together with 1095 uh well so well that that's what is a very very common combination Spoken like a guy who doesn't forge knives, but spoken like a guy who can't wait to forge knives when he retires. This I've talked about a million times. Beautiful stag handle, uh, really beautiful sub hilt and hilt uh, of wrought iron and a gorgeous sheath. All right, next up is a famous one. Uh, this is the, uh, the Artac 2 by Ontario. And, and the Artac 2 sort of morphed into the SE Hunglis. So I'm going to kind of put these in the same camp. My brother has an SE Hunglis. And uh, by comparing them, they're very, very, very similar. Uh, and in one way they're similar is that 1095 blade steel. Um, and that comes in super handy in a large outdoor fixed blade like this because 
you're going to be chopping. You're going to be swinging this knife. You could be batoning this knife through wood. You need that toughness. And when I say toughness, what we're talking about is resilience, ability to take impact without without breaking. Um, this 1095 blade, uh, this uh, VG10 blade steel did, did not do a very good job of that. Now, I was at an angle when I threw this. Should it have snapped? I kind of feel like if it were 1095, it would have bent. Uh, but... Uh, so in this this uh, blade, this is exactly what you want because it's uh, fully flat ground. It's slicey and tough. You want to get in this knife. You want to get a blade geometry that can slice and can do a lot of finer woodworking. But also, you want to be able to baton this and and chop it through wood. So uh, a very resilient and tough blade steel is what you want. Oh, nice micarta handles on that aftermarket sheath, um, an old stalwart. Uh, again, 1095, here's the sear. Uh, I just showed this off, so I'm not going to go too much into it, except to say that I was uh, accentuating its its fighterness before when I was talking about it with the, uh, with the guard and everything. This is a great fighter at five and a half inches, just an awesome knife for that, but... At with 1095 blade steel and a high saber grind, like it gets, it's very thin. It's a nice, it's got a nice geometry here. This is going to make for a great camp knife and outdoors knife. It's uh, sturdy enough with its full tang, full tang extending even into the guards and the comfortable handle. Um, so I think that the 1095 blade steel, I was hoping that this wasn't D2 or something else. Um, and, uh, when I looked it up and saw 1095, that actually did it for me because uh, with fixed blade knives, especially the over four inches, I, I'm just wanting more and more something that's more that's less stainless, more resilient. Okay, second to last knife here, a very very famous one. This is the Western W49 Bowie. Uh, this thing is just a beaut. My brother got this one for me in a pawn shop. This has some crazy, uh, well, he bought it for himself and I I begged for it and he finally gave it to me. Uh, this has some sort of bone on it. I'm not sure what it is, but it always freaks me out a little bit because uh, I think, what if it was the the leg bone of the, of the biker's victim? This obviously was a biker's knife, at least in my fantasy. Pounded down Quillian here, took a lot of effort. These, these brass um, guards are super stout. This thing's an awesome, awesome fighter. Uh, they later uh, uh, started making these in stainless. Uh, so I got one of the ones in 1095, luckily. And uh, yeah, you're going to got not, not much to say about this one because I got to say, I'm not going to take this outside and pound this through anything. To me, this is a tough guy, uh, you know, tough guy knife. This is a fighter. This Western 49 buoy. Okay, last up has the most mileage of, of any of these knives by far. I got this when I was a kid, 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 like like 12 or something. Uh, I'll show you first. This is the sheath my brother made for it a couple of years back. But here it is. This is the Ontario Knife Company U.S. machete, 18-inch blade uh, U.S. service machete. It's old. It's got a Bakelite handle. I got this in the early 80s at Public Safety Supply in Mayfield, Ohio, which was an awesome. It was like the place you could buy Uzis and Spaz shotguns and stuff like that uh, around where I lived. And uh, you could also buy machetes. And I bought this machete and a sheath that came with it that I, that I decorated in, in black woad as if I were Conan the Barbarian. And then I went on all sorts of adventures in the woods with this. Um, I've used this here in my Virginia home, but this got a lot of use in the woods in Ohio. And uh, the I've told this story. I'll tell it again. The crowning achievement of that knife was uh, cutting in tw twice, cutting through a red oak about this big. It was huge. I had uh, two different axes and this machete, and I put the axes aside and ended up using that machete. You can span a lot with a thin flexible 1095 sharp machete blade you can span a lot more than an axe and if i had to cut through a tree again i'd probably choose a machete all right guys thank you so much for checking out this hail and hearty high carbon um, 
journey into 1095 blade steel please forgive the expression uh i love 1095 i would love to see it on more folders i could handle it i could handle it in a in a folder just take care of it right i can do it in all my slip joints so why why wouldn't i be able to do it in a locking modern folder might be an issue near the pivot Anyway, be sure to join us tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so you get your chance to win the ringed inversion by Dirk Pinkerton. And then, of course, check out on Sunday our conversation with Bob Trizuola, the godfather of the modern tactical folder. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.